it's all about living what I call a brain health centric life where you put your brain health at the forefront of everything that you do. So what does that mean? Well, there are some really easy tweaks that you can utilize to really start to boost your mood. First one being... Welcome to GMP, the great, glorious, and glamorous, a.k.a. the Going North Podcast, where authors from around the world help you realize that success is tangible. You'll leave with at least one new piece of inspiration or information to help you keep going north. Now let's get on with the show. Today's review highlight is titled Brilliant Conversations. Love listening to this podcast. It's fun, engaging, and I love the chats that Dom has with his guests. My favorite question is, if your book was a food item, what would it be and why? Thank you. And that is a five-star review from the Teresa Lambert. And we thank you, Teresa, for leaving a great review on the podcast about the podcast. And if you, too, in the future want to get your review highlighted on the podcast, head over to goingnorthpodcast.com and leave a review on the website. We'll be happy to highlight it in a future episode. And speaking of episodes, let's get on with the current episode right now. And today on the Highlight Reel Builder for Authors, known as GMP, the great, glorious, and glamorous, it's the Going North podcast, and we got another super special, awesome human for you today, my friends, that's right, indeed, because mental health is a big topic that needs to be tackled today, and we got a freaking expert in the building to help cover that topic with at least one blanket indeed because today's fe- featured guest is not only a fellow podcast host and recently discovered a fellow bread warmer since we we're also toastmaster at one point he's a mental health advocate speaker coach that is dedicated to spreading hope compassion and information about mental health so let's give it up for the zw himself the zany when he wants to be and the winner himself zach westerbeck how you doing today zach i appreciate you dom i'm doing well man cannot complain Cannot complain. How are you doing? Man, I'm doing fabulous indeed. <laughs> I love fabulous. it. I, lo- I love it. I love to hear it. <laughs> oh, that's too good. I'm feeling fabulous as well. I'm feeling I'm feeling relaxed. I'm feeling calm, which is nice for me because normally I, I got a little bit of that undercurrent of anxiety going. So it's a nice I'm, I'm feeling in a good I'm in a good headspace today. So thank you for having me on. Oh, my pleasure indeed. That's right, indeed. In this land, we have cucumbers, and we try to keep folks cool within at least two cucumbers. <laughs> I, you know what? I love it. I love it. I love it. Nothing like some cucumber water to keep you hydrated, you know? Maybe throwing a little mint leaf in there. You're We're cooking. <laughs> there you go. That's right, indeed. We're cooking today. And speaking of cook, my man's been cooking up the great content, indeed, because... I guess at the time of recording, you launched your podcast this week. You got this best-selling book with over 200 plus reviews on Amazon. Remind the folks that they're not alone. So my goodness. So since it's your first time on the show, try to usually get the backstory. So my filling in any cavities a bit on who is the wonderful Zach himself. Man. Well, I mean, I'll, you know, I'm just, I'm just a, just a human being trying to help out other, other people, man. But got into this, got into this line of work for your listeners tuning in as a, as a mental health advocate, speaker, uh, mental health coach, and then author of the mental health book. You're not alone. Very unexpectedly, very unexpectedly. This was not my planned path. And I was listening to some of your, um, your episodes prior to this one. And I can't remember which guest it was that, uh, that I was listening to that basically said, you know, your, your life is fluid, right? You're on this journey and you're sort of just trying to figure out what it, what am I here for? And for me, uh, if you fast forward back to late 2015, I don't, I wouldn't have had that answer for you. I didn't know. I had recently graduated from college. I'd moved down to Raleigh, North Carolina. You and I were talking about that, that Toastmasters. And, uh, 
I was just down in Raleigh working at the technology company, Cisco Systems. So I was a part of fast paced sales organization, thought that my life was going to be, was going to be that innovative, fast paced sales technology, uh, really buying into this idea of moving the world forward. So I was excited about that. But right at about the, call it the 10 month mark of moving down to Raleigh, things started to change with the way that my brain functioned. And all of a sudden, I'm waking up with a pounding heart, like a drum line in the chest, sweaty palms, dry mouth, racing thoughts. Now I'm, I'm 22 years old. I'm a 10 hour drive from home. I know that I don't like what I'm feeling. I also know that I don't know what I'm feeling. And I also don't want anybody else to know what I'm feeling. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Right. So in all my infinite wisdom, 2016 is right around the corner. I say, you know what? I'm going to devise a plan. And I'm going to take the month of January. And I'm going to flip my brain back to the way that it used to be. And in, in, in my mind, my brain was like a light switch. Something had been turned on. And I just needed to flip it back to the way that it used to be. I was going to do that by going to work, going to the gym, sitting in the steam room and sweating out all the toxins in my body. Back in 2016, I mean, in all four years of college, I was high constantly. I was smoking weed all the time. I was partying a lot. And of course, at that time, I'm telling myself, well, this is this is what I like to do. This is what I enjoy. What I didn't realize, of course, hindsight being 2020, is I was self-medicating from something. So as I go on this journey at the start of, of January, I spend those 31 days executing flawlessly, going to work, mm -hmm. going to the gym, sitting in the steam room, sweating out all the toxins in my body. And by the end of the month, I had gotten results. It just wasn't the results that I was looking for. And I distinctly remember as sort of the brain fog started to clear up as, as I, you know, I was, I wasn't partying on the weekends. I wasn't smoking. I wasn't doing anything. I was really sitting with myself for the first time in a long time. And now all of a sudden I'm flooded with severe anxiety and a second symptom, mm -hmm. which was depression. Now to some of your listeners, they might be going through that right now or they know somebody, or they have a son or daughter that's experiencing depression. And I can tell you why I became an advocate is that what I learned like within a month of my time into 2016 is that anxiety and depression in a lot of ways are not a choice. Now, what I mean by that is there are some, there are some talk therapies, some cognitive treatment modalities, some talk therapies that you can utilize to change your cognitions to realize blind spots, um, unhelpful ways of thinking, belief systems that can oftentimes keep you trapped and cause you to feel depression. But for a lot of people, there's also a genetic component. I didn't know that back in 2016. I thought if you were a sad person, you could just snap out of it. If you were an anxious person, you needed to get over yourself, right? And so here I am, 22 years old, 10 hour drive from home, down in Raleigh, North Carolina, barely know anybody. And now I'm severely anxious, deeply depressed with no answers as to what is happening. So I go into full blown panic mode. I'm like, okay, we got to hit the panic, button. we need to find, we need to find something to, to, to get my brain back to the way it used to be. Right. And now I'm really clinging to the idea that my brain is like a light switch and I just need to flip it back so I can get my old life back. So this next couple of months, I call Zach's home remedies, right? And this is yeah. when I was doing all the, all the things, all the things. I was sleeping more. I was meditating. I was taking all the supplements. I was working out. I was reading personal development, trying to hit all these buttons. I'm, I'm devouring personal development books. I'm like, if I just read the right book, it'll take my mindset and it'll flip it to something more positive and then I'll be fine. I was doing two things really well during this, during this time period. Number one, I was hiding from the outside world what I was experiencing internally. A lot of your listeners might be there right now. Not a single person knew, man. Nobody. Not my coworkers, not my family members, not my now wife, none of my friends. 
the second thing that I was doing was to denying to myself just how quickly my brain health was deteriorating. And by the end of April, May, I was having thoughts of suicide from the moment I woke up until the moment I went to bed. Didn't even know human beings could get there. Didn't know that the brain, the human brain was capable of that. Anytime I'd grown up and I'd heard about somebody taking their life by suicide or that somebody was struggling with suicidal thoughts, it didn't even make sense to me. I didn't understand how people could get there. Again, thinking it was a choice. Certainly not understanding why somebody would ever take their life. Didn't make sense to me. Life's beautiful, right, Dom? I mean, come on. Life's beautiful. Look at this. We're spinning on a rock in the middle of space, and it's. <laughs> this, I'm, I'm looking out my window right now. I mean, it's it's a beautiful planet. How? Why would anyone ever want to leave? Mm-hmm. Right? So now, all of a sudden, 22 years old, severely anxious, deeply depressed, and struggling with thoughts of suicide. From the moment I wake up until the moment I go to bed. And I'll spare some of the details for your listeners, but basically everything came to a head one night where I came home. I was standing on the balcony of my four story apartment, had two other roommates. We all worked at the same company. They were gone. And I remember I was standing out on the balcony because I had found one little thing that gave me like 10 minutes of peace of mind. And that was sitting out there and watching the sunset. So I'm out there, I'm standing up, I'm watching the sunset, my hands are on the on the railing, and I remember I'm looking around, and I look over the railing, again, just looking around, and boom, a thought pops into my head. And the thought tells me that if I throw myself over the balcony face first, that I'll drop 40 feet on my head, and that'll get the job done. That all of my suffering, all of this struggle, all of this confusion in my life will be over. So I let go of the railing. My palms are sweaty. My heart is just beating in my chest. And my eyes are just welling with tears. And I fall back into the apartment in the living room. I curl into the fetal position. I haven't been in the fetal position in that. I mean, I couldn't even tell you when. And I ball, ball, like the kind of crying that you have. Like, you know, the laugh that we had before you hit record when we were joking about (laughs) about women in Budapest and how they'll leave you at the altar if if you're not careful. Yeah, Um, that was me. But just with tears, man. And I had, you know, I had taken so much pride in in I'm not giving into this. I'm not crying. And I was exhausted. For the first five, six months of 2016, I felt like I was fighting a battle that nobody else could see and that I didn't understand. And I was exhausted. And I bawled super hard because when I thought 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road, if this is what it was going to be, like if this is how I was going to feel, it's not what I signed up for. You know, like it just, it, it was, it was psychological pain is well they've pr- now proven that physical and psychological pain register in the brain the same way so when you're flooded with intrusive thoughts when you're struggling with depression anxiety it hurts psychologically but it hurts physically it pays a toll on your body and i was just worn down and so i said you know what before i do anything let me pick up this phone and just call somebody to tell them what's going on before I, before I take what I think is at this point, probably the only option. So I pick up the phone and I call my parents and what they did for me is what I now do for others. You see, they encouraged me to go seek professional assistance. And in late 2016, after some trial and error, and I want to be transparent, we can talk about the the mental health care system, wherever you're taking this conversation, just like we said, life is, it, it's fluid, right? It flows. So I'm, I'm ready to go anywhere with you. But I eventually found a psychologist that knew what was going on with me. And I was diagnosed with a chronic brain disorder known as OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder, where the core symptoms are severe anxiety, deep depression, and thoughts of suicide. And immediately uh, after identifying a therapist that specialized in the treatment of OCD. I started a talk therapy known as exposure and response prevention or ERP. Mm. 
And over the course of the next couple of years through talk therapy, lifestyle changes and mindset shifts, I was able to get back to a place where I wanted to help others. The big thing being that I never wanted somebody else to ever suffer in silence again, because I felt like I came from a good family. I had people that cared about me. I had the resources to pay for therapy and I was pushed to the brink. Mm. So I didn't want somebody out there in the world that looks around in their situation and feels hopeless already to then have that added layer of depression and anxiety and not know what to do or feel completely alone and isolated. And that was the hardest part, Dom. I felt completely alone. As I was going through this, I felt like I would look around the office and be like, man, I wish I was normal. I wish I was like everybody else, man. I have it so much harder than everyone else. And through this advocacy work, I've learned that there are so many people that struggle with these symptoms um, and we need to stop hiding it. We need to normalize it. And that's why the title of my book is You're Not Alone. And it's a guide to, for 18 to 24 year olds um, to overcome anxiety and depression. And I wrote it because it's everything I wish I would have known at the onset of when I was experiencing those symptoms. It's a step by step, easy to read guide. And I made it easy to read. People will always tell me, Zach, I can read this book in a weekend. I'm like, they're like, no offense. I can read it in a weekend. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's what I was going for. Because when you're depressed and anxious, you're exhausted. You don't have time mm -hmm. for doctors to try to hit you with, with their medical jargon and sound smart for their friends so that they can show off. You just want solutions. You just want to feel good again. And that's my, that's my mission, man. So that's the, that's the background for your listeners. That's what catapulted me into this career. And it's been a beautiful journey. I would have never guessed that this is what I would have landed on didn't have this on my roadmap for a second and now i'm a now i'm a public speaker mental health coach author and um like you said just launching the podcast so it's it's, it's a blessing man and i'm glad to be here with you so thank you oh, my pleasure man and glad you're still here man because i'm sure you probably would have felt that pain if you would have followed through with that crazy idea of the 40 foot fall man like that's insane like it and i would have regretted just, it <laughs> on the way down yeah. but it probably would have been too late you know what i mean yeah yeah and yeah it it's it's just crazy how like no matter where people are in life no matter what love you are like you could be at the highest levels the echelons of life like have the perfect setup for like the perfect life but still come across an actual setback an actual disorder where it's like oh get these crazy ideas of suicidal thoughts and thinking, Oh, I'm, I'm just alone here. Nobody else is going through what I'm going through. And it's like, uh, no, nah, it's actually a lot of people going through it now more than ever. So my goodness, man, like, so if 2016 had that discovery was able to bounce back after getting that professional help, glad you got that professional help and definitely advocating for it. So I guess with, everything in 2020 do you feel like you were bulletproof enough to deal with everything or did you still have some stuff to deal with <laughs> with the anxiety such, that hit everybody <laughs> that's such a good question dom that's such a good question because no no and i don't think i'll ever be bulletproof like when you think about brain health or mental health i, I call it brain health because i'm trying to get people to think about the brain like an organ in the body the same mm. way that we do our hearts we don't call our heart health soul health we call it heart health because it's a tangible organ in the body. And we know that there are actions that we can take to improve its functionality. And what I've learned is it's the exact same thing with the brain, depression, anxiety. It's all neuroscience. And there are different regions in the brain that contribute to those symptoms. And so for me, when I think about brain health, I think about it like a continuum. Right. There are so many different factors that can bring that out. There are there is the genetic component like they've identified the gene for OCD. It lies dormant in the body. And when somebody goes through something traumatic, it activates it. Now, what you're describing with the pandemic, that's collective trauma. Mm. We have all been through something uncertain, unexpected. And that caused a, a lot of us a whole hell of a lot of us, like you said, that collective anxiety to shift on that brain health continuum because every single day during the pandemic was uncertain. It was a change in norm. Some people 
that sheltered in place weren't safe inside of their homes, right? There was a lot going on. We had so much political turmoil, so many different social uh, movements going on. So it was just a lot coming at you at once. And your brain is like on overload trying to process it. But the underlying thing is that everything's uncertain. Because this society that we live in that felt very like, this is a society, this is how this works, this is how things function, got ripped out from underneath us. And we all saw just how quickly things can kind of go to hell. They can just really change quickly on you. And I think that that really impacts everybody's mental health, but mine included. Now, what I will say is that there are tools that I've learned through therapy that helped me cope with that uncertainty and do all right with it. Where I know that there were a lot of people that this was their first time that they'd ever had to confront anxiety or depression. And it was very overwhelming because it was their kind of their, it was like me back in 2016. So I, that is just an excellent question because no, I don't think I'll ever be bulletproof. I think things will pop up, but it's also because I understand that there are so many factors that play into how you feel on a daily basis. Heck yeah, man. Definitely say that again, indeed. And you mentioned tools, and I'm sure a ton of them are in the book. So any, I'm guessing, is there a hammer or a screwdriver you're willing to pass on to the folks listening metaphorically? <laughs> yes, I love it. I will pass along. I, I got a hammer. I got nails. I got a screwdriver. I got all of it, man. I mean, I think. I think that the the first part is awareness, right? Mm. If if you're feeling sweaty palms, a pounding heart, dry mouth, racing thoughts, if you're feeling impending doom, like if you're always feeling on edge, if you're feeling a loss of appetite, if you feel like you toss and turn at night, if you're feeling fatigue constantly, if you're feeling lack of motivation constantly, If you're feeling negative about everything in your life, this could be a sign that you are either burning out or you're experiencing anxiety. With that in mind, if you notice a change in your weight, severe weight gain, severe weight loss. For me, I lost 20 pounds overnight, right? If you feel like you can't sleep or you sleep all day long, it's impossible to get out of bed. If you feel like a gray cloud has rolled over your head and into your life, could be a sign that you're feeling depression. So awareness, I always say, is the very first piece because that's actually what kept me stuck. Had I known what I was feeling early on, um, I'm not saying that I would have necessarily gone to to get help because I didn't know that that was the best option, but at least I would have been like, oh, this is depression because I didn't really know what I was feeling. I just knew that I felt horrible. So that's step number one is the awareness, right? The second tool, because that's the first and most, that's like, the number one tool if we're if we're if we're building noah's ark we got to have the hammer that's number one (laughs) we got to have the hammer the second one is giving giving your listeners the permission to to go seek professional assistance to go talk to a therapist go talk to somebody and if that feels too daunting talk to a close friend somebody that you trust and somebody that you know is not going to cast judgment And we all sort of know, right, intuitively, like who that person is in our life that's like, yeah, we can go to them and and we can trust them. So if you struggle with sharing or opening up just like I did, I I had like all these old beliefs about what it meant to be a man. Like men don't feel, they don't have any emotions, you know, and if they do, you bury them deep, you bury them deep. And if you don't, you're weak. That's like what I believed. I don't believe that anymore. I actually think the strongest people in the world are the ones that are willing to face their emotions and and do something about it, you know, embrace what they're mm-hmm. going through. So that's the next tool is use a resource like psychologytoday.com, Talkspace, BetterHelp, resources like my book. There's a ton of mental health books out there. I got a shelf full of them back here. All of them I've, I've read that can get you on that path, but it it starts by, by asking for help. It's okay to not be okay. That, that we gotta, we gotta nail that down. It's okay to, to not feel okay because our emotions, just like with physical pain is just a signaler. Like if you broke your arm, Dom, right. You would feel pain shooting from your arm to your brain. That's a function of the, of the body. And our body does that to say, yo, Hey, you need to time out. You need to stop. You just hurt yourself. 
That's the same thing with our brains. When we feel anxious, depressed, stressed, or burned out, that is our brain trying to signal us, yo, there is something out of balance in your life right now that needs to be addressed. So it's the awareness. It's going to seek help by looking up a local therapist in your area. There are so many different virtual options now. There's still in, there's in-person options now that the world is opening back up. And then in addition to therapy, it's all about the lifestyle changes. It's all about living what I call a brain health centric life, where you put your brain health at the forefront of everything that you do. So what does that mean? Well, there are some really easy tweaks that you can utilize to really start to boost your mood. First one being sleep. The average American gets between five to six hours of sleep a night, and yet we're supposed to get between eight to 10. Mm -hmm. Sleep dictates everything. It dictates energy levels. It dictates your mood. It, di it dictates your ability to, to cope with the daily stresses of life. Like it, 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 it just off top, if you don't get enough sleep, you're going to wake up a little grouchy. I don't know if you've ever noticed that with yourself, but <laughs> oh, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> a little moody, right? Like, and it's all of us. We're a little grouchy, a little moody, a <laughs> little sensitive, maybe a little irritable. So right off the bat, that's one of the first things that we have to fix is getting appropriate amount of sleep and tracking it. I always say you can't mm. fix what you don't measure. You cannot fix what you don't measure. And I track my sleep every single day. I've got an app called Auto Sleep, and then I use my Apple Watch. But Fitbit has it. Fitbit's a cheap option. People can go out and buy a Fitbit for 40 bucks right now. You know, whoop, that's a little more um, data, more of a data-driven um, wearable that, that gives you a lot of different information about the vitals in your body. But I just say that all to say we, we, can't, we can't improve what we don't track. And start by tracking your sleep. It holds you accountable. And I use the app Auto Sleep. Next is physical health. Now, I, I know that some people, they don't work out. That's not their thing. For me, I personally advocate for 20 to 30 minutes of exercise that gets your heart rate up over 130 beats per minute. Because that's when you're going to release endorphins. And endorphins are a natural feel-good chemical for the brain and a natural painkiller. So it's going to help you relax. It's going to help you feel good. I'm not going to say it's going to cure anxiety or depression, but it's I, use, I work out every single day because it helps regulate my mood, my anxiety, and my depression. But if you're not into exercising, a walk. There's oh, yeah. nothing better than that 30 to hour long walk, Dom, outside. Get outside. Yep. We're all so cooped up these days, right? Uh -huh. So... That's another simple tool that people can start to utilize right now in addition to the therapy and tracking their sleep. And then the last one is meditation. And I want to debunk something real quick because I always hear this from people in my advocacy work, which is like, I don't like sitting there and closing my eyes, Zach, because I can't turn my brain. <laughs> I can't turn my brain off. All and, I, the time. <laughs> and I'm like, I get it. I get it. The brain has over 30,000 thoughts a day, though. It's actually impossible to turn our thoughts turn our thoughts off. Nobody can, not even the best, not, not even the monks who meditate for half of their day yeah, can completely shut off their brains from thought. It, instead, meditation is all about actually sitting with your thoughts and welcoming them in while just attempting to focus on your breathing. And what studies have found is that somewhere between five to 15 minute, minutes of meditation a day can shrink a region in the brain known as the amygdala, which is responsible for our fight or flight or anxiety, and quite literally creates a calmer mind, a calmer brain. So it's literally, it is exercise for your brain the same way that we exercise our bodies. And you don't have to be a guru. That's the other one I get. Zach, I don't know how to meditate, man, and I don't have time to learn. I'm like, neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't exactly. <laughs> I didn't either. I downloaded an app. And I think some of the best ones out there are Headspace or Calm. It's like uh $9.99 a month, man. Nine bucks, ten bucks a month, but it's an investment in your health. I meditate every single day. I've meditated over 40,000 minutes, and 
besides therapy, meditation is the single best thing that I've ever done. And it's why I think I've recovered to a level where I can advocate for others. So as much as I'm a mental health advocate, I'm also a meditation advocate. So those are like the three core pillars in addition to therapy. Some of the tools, if you will, the, the Phillips head, the screwdriver, et cetera, for your listeners. Of course, there's there's much more we could go into, but I think that those are simple, digestible things that people can do to get started on their path. Yeah, it's a good path indeed, a better path indeed, a better path, if you will. That's right indeed, and that's right indeed. You can tell a man is a true expert indeed because a man gave some of that real Detail responses, indeed. That's right, indeed. Working out to where you get to 130 beats per minute. Like, if folks be like, yeah, just work out. Yeah, it's 30, 40 minutes. Yeah. Well, yeah, you got to get to the point where it's 130 beats per minute. It's like, yeah, baby. That's right, indeed. That true detail. That means he actually is a practitioner, baby. That's right, indeed. We got the real deal, Holyfield here, baby. <laughs> you know, man, I think we're all just trying to figure it out. I'm just, uh, I'm just a pretender trying to trying to share what little bit I know. <laughs> there we go. Hey, there you go. Pretend until you practice for real. Fake it, I guess. Fake it till you make it right. Isn't that what they say? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Just don't go too far, though. Instagram has made a whole industry out of that, as well as other social medias, I guess. <laughs> well, amen. And you want to <laughs> you want to talk about another one that I and that's in my book we got to start changing our relationship with social media because it's, it's killing us from the inside. It's absolutely killing us from the inside. And there's actually a linear correlation. They, they did a study and they found that there's actually a linear correlation between time spent on social media and the likelihood that you experience the onset of anxiety and depression. And I think that the biggest component behind that is comparison. Even if you get on the app, most of us get on the app blindly. So the first thing is intention. Yep. You know what I mean? We're just on there. We're scrolling. We're doom scrolling. We're, we're killing time. And I get it. I totally get it. I, I do the same thing from time to time. But the first thing is intentionality. If you don't know what you're trying to get out of the app, the app will get something out of you. And, that's, <laughs> and, that's, and that is where we are seeing since 2008, an absolute explosion amongst the youth in depression and anxiety levels. Well, what happened in 2008, Dom? <laughs> well, recession for one, but <laughs> recession for one. Hey, you know what? That's fair. That that might have actually been what kicked it off. But um, the 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 iPhone and social and the and uh, and uh, social media, Facebook, the real adoption of Facebook started to take off in 2008. So, look, I don't think that that's everything contributing to where we're at in society today, but it's a part of it. And I think it's because as human beings, we can't help but compare. We're always comparing. And there's some metrics right at the top on Instagram that tell you, if you let it tell you what your value is, right? And that's just your followers. Your followers and then who you're following dictates a lot of our emotions but i'm glad you brought that up because i speak primarily to 18 to 24 year olds and they're they've grown up with social media so much that it's so ingrained in them at this point that i think amongst college students which is who i like i said primarily talk to it's the anxiety and, and depression is through the roof and i think it's just because there's so much comparison going on there yeah, man. Like, you're definitely right. It funny enough reminds me of this uh, YouTuber. He, uh, funny enough, he was talking about how <laughs> one of his little nephews, I think he was like 10 years old, came to have playing his pool and everything and he was flexing on the gram and giving these little <laughs> motivational speeches like, yeah, you gotta grind hard to win. <laughs> and then apparently he got a hold of his phone. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the nephew of his and spent about a good like forty eight dollars on like some online games or something, <laughs> and he's like, man, this kid gonna pay me back his money. He gonna learn a lesson. Today. He's gonna learn a lesson about grinding. He's gonna exactly. learn a lesson about how to make a dollar because he needs to make forty eight to pay me back. <laughs> That's too good. That is too good. That's funny. Yeah, it's, it's like uh. It's like, and that's what folks compare themselves to. It's like, dude, 
Like you're just looking at somebody's bar or somebody else's living quarters or space or whatever, or just visiting. And like they're just taking pictures, flexing. <laughs> and truth be told, it behind the closed door, it's like they ain't got nothing there. They broke living paycheck to paycheck, <laughs> if anything. <laughs> Even businesses were living paycheck to paycheck before the pandemic revealed the fact that that was happening. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> oh my god! So many businesses, man. That was something I realized quickly when the pandemic started. It was like, geez, nobody's got any money in reserves. Yeah, <laughs> nobody has any money in reserves. And that's the other thing. I see so many people on social media, like flexing, like you said, and going on these vacations. I heard the other day that there's a business where you can show up and take a picture in a private jet. Yep. <laughs> that's, so, it's, that's so sad to me. It's so sad. All to just post it on the gram and I, for what? For what? So that's a whole chapter in the book. I'm glad you brought that up because I do think social media is, is it, it's playing a huge impact. And even with the coaching clients that I work with one-on-one, -on -one, I mean, you know, I can think of a, one of the young men that I work with where one thing, one of the mindsets and mentalities we had to work through was his relationship with his body because mm. he had seen so many just absolutely ripped Jack guys on, on Instagram that that was their whole business, their whole business model was to get people that felt and I, look, I get it, right? I don't think that they went into it with the idea of like, I'm going to prey on people that feel insecure about their bodies to get them to buy my package so that they start to work out. But I think that they thought, hey, I'm going to get in shape and then I'm going to teach people how to do it. That's what I'd like to believe. The unintended uh, effect though, is that if you're an 18 year old young man and you want to look like this guy that all he does is eat, breathe and sleep the gym and the diet and everything that goes around that and then you look in the mirror and that's not what your body looks like and you're not grounded in who you are boom your self-esteem is shot mm -hmm. confident shot and another key indicator especially for depression is low self-esteem it's a huge yep. indicator that you'll you'll exp that you'll experience depression is is your is your self-esteem levels yeah, man, you're definitely right about that, too. And it's good that you helped not the youth like that, because, like, even myself, even looking back when I was 18, like, I was, I was like, I had a major confidence boost because I got through high school because I almost didn't make it out because of English classes, no less. <laughs> it wasn't a strong suit. <laughs> and here and, you are, man, an author. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, wow. And I was ultra skinny back then because, like, hey, I wanted to keep up with my buddies who were a lot skinnier than me. And it's like, Hey, so that that's so true. Like that body image, like it's, it's definitely huge, especially that time where you are really at that huge development stage. It's like, you still got a lot of sponge left in you to absorb all the stuff that comes your way. <laughs> it's so true. You're just a, you're just a huge sponge, man. And I, I I've, I've suffered from, struggled with confidence as well. And I think that it's so important that men talk about that more too, because I feel like it's all about acting tough. Like you've got it all figured out. I've got the answer and it, it leaves men feeling isolated. I feel a lot of the time because a, a good portion of my coaching one-on-one -on -one coaching clients are young men that feel isolated. Don't feel like they can even open up to their friends, which is why, mm. um, that, you know, they end up hiring me because I be, I sort of become that outlet to help them work through these various challenges. Uh, my man is doing the Lord's work on that one. That's right. Indeed. That's right. Indeed. My man's doing the Lord's work with that one, baby. That's right. Indeed. That's right. Indeed. Cause yeah, it's a interesting times that we're in and folks have been eating that guy, especially, especially the, the young men with the, the assault that uh, men are getting on a lot of fronts nowadays. <laughs> Thanks That's to the, right. it, Thanks to the small group of idiots, the rest of us have to su somewhat suffer from them. <laughs> that's exactly right, man. Gosh, that's a very true statement. Very true. <laughs>
So my goodness, man, since you've been on these podcasts, spreading the good word of making sure that you keep your brain at the top of your mind, <laughs> I guess pun unintended, but intended, is there a question that you wish you'd be asked more often when you're on the guest side of the game on these podcasts? Mm, ooh, I like that. I think the big thing that I, that I want people to know is just that going to, there's this movement taking place. And I think it's the next step in human consciousness where people are opening up to this idea that, yes, brain health is a real thing and it's a it's a continuum. I don't have to be having thoughts of suicide or severely depressed or anxious to take care of my brain. Now, if I feel that way, don't suffer in silence. Go and get the help that you need. But also, let me go in there and work on myself. Other little nooks and crannies, areas that I didn't know. Maybe I was, I had an, an area of improvement. And I think that there's this huge movement and moving forward, going to seek professional help for your brain is going to be the same way that we have a dentist and a general practitioner mm. that we go in and see if, if nothing else on a biannual annual basis, just for a checkup, the same way that we've been taught to do that with the, the dentist and the, and the family doctor. And so I just want people to know it doesn't make you weak, weird, or different to go seek help for your brain. I think it actually makes you evolved. And I think that that's, that's the direction that we're heading. We're healing. We're going to start healing collectively as a society. And I think that that's going to, that's going to have a really, really important ripple effect moving forward. So I'm just excited for it. Oh yeah. It's big old X indeed. That's right. Me indeed. My man, Zach's been dropping them gems, baby. That's right. That's right. Indeed. Getting help does not make you weak, weird, or different y'all. That's right. Indeed. That's right, indeed, that WWD. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. You don't have that if you get that help. Getting help is a good thing, indeed. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hold back for trying to get him to laugh. <laughs> it's got the water. The <laughs> when you said the WWD, I literally thought in my head, I was like, that is so clever. How you thought about that off the top of your head like that is impressive. Impressive. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, my man. Appreciate it indeed. It's right indeed. That's one of the beautiful things about conversations like this is where folks get to take their diamond swag and become even shinier. That's mm. right indeed. That's right mm. indeed. That's right indeed. Amen. Love that. Yeah, that's right indeed. Well, they say diamonds are a girl's best friend and dogs are a man's best friend. Well, I guess food's a stomach's best friend. So if your wonderful book, You're Not Alone, is a food, what would it be and why? Ooh. Ah, uh, man. Does it have to be one food or can it be a genre of food? You know what? You're the first one to ask me that in retorts, so <laughs> go for it. <laughs> I am an absolute sucker for Mediterranean food, man. I just, I love everything about Mediterranean food. So if my book could be a genre of food, it would be Mediterranean food. There we go. I love me some tzatziki. Love me a good euro. I can't complain on the veggies. Uh, it just, I'm, yeah, I'm, it's Mediterranean. That's what I'm going with. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. You're getting a whole Mediter Mediterranean buffet with this book, baby. That's right, indeed. That's, that's right. right. That's right. The MBM, that Mediterranean buffet for your mind. That's right, indeed. Mm, that, that's right, indeed. That, <laughs> M that MBM. I love it. The Mediterranean right, buffet for your mind. Too good. <laughs> He's like, oh, I am so using that so in the future now. <laughs> 100%. If anyone ever asks me what type of food my book is, I will tell them it is Mediterranean. But don't eat it. Don't actually eat my book. Because <laughs> that's not how you're going to digest this information. You see what I just did there? You'll have the dog looking at you like, hey, wait a second. That's my job. <laughs> <laughs> Except for we don't have a dog in this household, not yet. So the book, the, my books are safe. Our books are oh, safe. Good. Oh, good, good. All right, good. Yes, indeed. That's right, indeed. Because uh, you got this meme going around. They got the dog in them. Well, that's good. <laughs> if the dog ain't in them. You don't eat the book. <laughs> that's right. The dog can't eat my homework if you don't have one. <laughs> That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. 
So my goodness, bear coming down to the magical question that every guest gets to receive. And you don't even have to go back too far for this one. So if you wake up tomorrow and you were 25, but you're still in 2022, what advice would you give to yourself? Just enjoy the fluidity of it, man. Just if you would have told 25 year old Zach, 22 year old Zach that, Hey, you're going to end up writing a book and starting a business and speaking to thousands of students and work with students one-on-one -on -one and launch a podcast and all this other stuff. That's been really fun and fulfilling. I, I just, I don't know if I would have believed you. That's not what I thought my path was going to be. And so I see this with young adults all the time, college students specifically, they like coming into freshman year, they feel like they have to have everything figured out. And it's just like, life just doesn't work like that. I think that the whole purpose of life the, the with the time that you have is yes, to figure out why you're here, but it's a lifelong pursuit. And I think that what I'm doing right now is great, but I'm also open to the idea that that could change and be different. So just be open and, and be fluid and just let your life sort of flow naturally while you dive into what's interesting to you. So that would be the advice I would have given to younger Zach. Just enjoy the ride, man. Enjoy it. Be open to new ideas and concepts and just sort of to see where things take you. And then when they take you to a place that you're excited about, go all in on it. Oh, yeah, that's right. D, go all in. That's right, indeed. That's right. Go that deep dive, y'all. That's right. Go all in, y'all. That's right, indeed. That's right. Go monk mode if you have to. That's right. Deep meditation. That's right, indeed. Mm, mm. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. Maybe even shave your head if you want to. Just saying. Just saying. You could. I'm not... You totally could. <laughs> move, move, to, move to shave your head, move to Nepal, start meditating for half a day, one bowl of rice. Every day you'll be good to go. That's Andy yeah. Pudakambe for anybody listening. He's my favorite. <laughs> he was the founder of Headspace, my favorite app. And that's exactly what he did. He was from, he was from the UK, moved to, uh, I want to say it was one of the monasteries in Southeast Asia, shaved his head, started meditating. And like 15 years later, Headspace is the largest meditation app, or it, it either is or is number two on the face of the planet. So pretty cool. Oh, yeah, that's right. Indeed. That's how you get your head in the space, y'all. That's right. Indeed. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> that's exactly right. That's how you get plugged in. How you get locked in. That's right. Indeed. That's right. Indeed. Especially when corn and cucumbers are involved. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, but it ain't about corn and cucumbers it's about the body z himself so for those need to keep up with you zach and all that you're doing what's the best way for folks to do so www.zachwesterbeck.com zach is z-a-c-h westerbeck is spelled with all e's w-e-s-t-e-r-b-e-c-k and it's that's my instagram handle so instagram website you can hit me up i'll dm you back would love to hear from you Woohoo! So I'm talking about Dade. You heard it from the ZTW, the Zach the Winner, baby. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. So head over to his wonderful side. Check out his wonderful podcast today. Just launched at the week of this recording. And by the time you hear this episode in its entirety, it'll probably have 10 episodes up in days. So I get to do a deep dive, indeed. Listen to the great content he's putting out there in the world and then get that good headspace in more ways mm. than one. That's mm. right, indeed. That's right, indeed. So, my goodness, man, any parting words before we close up shop? Just let people know they're not alone. If you're struggling with anxiety, depression, thoughts of suicide, you're not alone. And just go, go seek help. You deserve to be happy and to heal. How's it going, my friend? I'm so glad you made it to the end. That shows that you are an uncommon finisher, and I am so grateful for you sharing your ears, your attention, and your time to this wonderful podcast to do something that will take yourself to the next level. And for everybody else involved in this wonderful program, share it with at least three people in your network so that way more folks can not only catch the fire that is on this podcast, but can also be inspired to be their best. 